which is how do we identify the project stakeholders? Now that we know who are stakeholders and we are aware why they are so important, what they can do to my project, let's find out is there a way we can do it in simple ways of course to identify the stakeholders. I am using a technique called uh, an onion diagram to demonstrate how this can be done. So let's take a look at uh, the process as an overview itself. The first step to gathering requirement, the project requirement is first you have to identify who can give you the requirements. And this session is all about that, identifying who can give you the requirements. Normally what happens is when we gather the requirement, we often overlook people who do not use the outcome of your project, which means who are not directly impacted or using your system. Having said that, that doesn't mean that they are not your stakeholders. We will have to identify them as well. Alright? And project communication will start flowing in the entire project. You need to control the communication. In order to do that, it is important that you identify the stakeholders and visualize their interaction. How many people, how they can interact with each other, what could they interact, what would be the purpose of interaction, so on and so forth. And the output for this particular process called identify stakeholder is a list of stakeholders as simple as that. Now we, we often do that, we do it maybe in isolation or we do it using an Excel or a spreadsheet. Well, it is okay, but uh, we just hope that we don't miss the stakeholders. Example, we just talked about people who don't use your system. Let's take a look at the onion diagram technique itself. All right, the name comes from the way it is uh, presentation, the way it is presented, the view of a system. And uh, if you look at onion, it's in layers. So stakeholder identification, we will use an onion diagram, which means we will cut in layers, and each of these layers will belong, some of the stakeholder will belong to each of these layers. An overview of what I'm talking about is the innermost circle, which is the system layer. Around that will be your core team, that is core project team, who would be directly using the system, who, will be, who are the people who are directly impacted by the system. And there are additional layers that uh, talks about the organization, which is the contained system containing system. In this layer, you will have people who are not directly using the system. And then a final layer which we call as external to the layer which is also known as a wider environment. So we will cut the onion into three layers and try to classify the stakeholders and identify and put them into each of these layers. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next slide. The next slide will give you a better picture of what we are talking about. Okay. So the three layers are the system, that is the core team, the core project team and the users, direct users. And the next layer is the containing system, which is the organization, which means um, the organization that the project uh, has been initiated, the organization itself. We'll see that with an example in few slides now. And then the wider environment, which is external to your organization, which is external to the project organization itself. That could be government agencies, that could be your suppliers, that could be your customers. We will see that by means of a small project case that I have brought up to demonstrate or illustrate identification of project stakeholder. All right. I have taken an example of uh, developing a mobile app. The project is develop mobile app. And here are uh, the description of the project, the features of the project. A water purifier manufacturing company wishes to develop a mobile app with the following key features. Feature number one, this mobile app should help their customer request a service 
for their water purifier. We have seen water purifier at our home, AquaGuard or any other uh, water purifier. And most often there is a need, there is a beep that comes up from purifier for changing of the candle or the maintenance attention required beep. So this is when we actually call up the contact center and uh, talk to someone and they send a service technician. So this mobile app will replay the telephone work. So I should be as a customer be able to raise a customer service request to this mobile company. That's a feature number one. Feature number two, someone from the contact center receives this request able to assign the service request to the available service technician, which means they will also use the system, the mobile app. So in addition to that, the contact center should also be able to update the status of the service request. For example, been assigned to a person by name so and so with the mobile number so and so. So that as a customer, I can see the status of my service request. And finally, uh, the third feature we talk about the service technician should be able to update the status of the service request with the resolution comment after he has completed the work or uh, the maintenance work that has been required by the customer. This normally happens at the site or at let's say my home as a customer. Keeping this, we're trying to keep our life simple. So I have made a case which talks about three features. Customer using the mobile app and there's a contact center people who use an app which also could be a mobile app or a larger app and there's an allocation to service technician. Service technician also gets a notification of where he has to go for service, the address and so on and so forth. And yes, finally, service technician updates the resolution comments. This is the project. Let's try to identify the project stakeholders for this particular project. All right. Now, we were talking about the three layers. The layer number one was the system, the system layer also, as I mentioned, is the core team. Keeping that project in mind, please notice the center of the circle is the name of the system itself. In this case, it is Water Purifier Service Request Mobile App, which is your project outcome. As I mentioned, sometimes an outcome could be a product. In this case, it is a software app. And sometimes it could be a service. Or sometimes it could be a result. A result is such that decrease in cost by 50%. So that becomes the center. The center uh, will be the product, the outcome itself. All right. Around that, we have a circle which we call a system layer, which is the core team. So let's take a look at who are these people. I have identified, keeping these three features in mind, who could be my project stakeholders who are in the system layer, which is the core team. I identify myself as one of the key stakeholders, project manager. And then I also identify software developers. At this time, I don't know the name of a person, so I will identify by groups. So let's say we have identified a group of software developers. And then we have system administrator, system administrator, a hardware, somebody who knows about the hardware and administrator the entire system. Then testing group, perhaps software tester group. Then uh, system documentation who creates user manuals, it could be a group or individual. And then we'll have service contact center representatives. These are the people or these are the group of people who would take the request from the mobile app, which is uh, uh, used by the customer. All right. And then we have the sponsor. The sponsor is the person who funds for this project. In this case, the water purifier mobile app is funded by the sponsor who is typically the service department head perhaps. Then we have service technicians. Service technicians are the people who will receive the assignment, work assignment and then go to the site, do the required work and update the work status along with the resolution comment. And we have a service team itself. So service technician is an individual, service team perhaps could be a group itself. 
So I have done this uh, keeping the three requirements in mind. It can go as complicated as we want to, but we have to identify as many stakeholders as possible in the beginning of the project itself. The reason being, we will be next talking to them as to what their requirements are. Okay. So here, keep in mind, currently I have identified as groups. You can identify as name of a person also. For example, a sponsor here, I am mentioning that sponsor is head of the department. I can actually name that person. The sponsor's name could be Raghuraman Kadambi. I can identify as Raghuraman Kadambi, the sponsor, and also given bracket department head for service department. So we have pretty much identified for the given requirement uh, of three features. The core team who would be delivering, who will be directly using the system or will be delivering this project. Let's move to our next onion ring, which is known as the containing system. The containing system also can be looked upon as the organization itself. Here, in this case, the manufacturing company that manufactures the water purifying system, entire organization will be known and treated as the containing system. Please notice, this ring comprises of people who may not be directly using this. And this is actually critical because more often than not, we are good at identifying perhaps the inner ring, which is the system layer, but fail few people in the containing organization. For the project, I have identified few of them, and they are the marketing team. One may ask this question, why is marketing team connected with the service request mobile app? Here is the point. I think marketing team could be interested in this app because when a service technician goes to repair a particular, uh, let's say, unit, and uh, he can give an information saying that a repair is not possible, a new purchase recommendation can be made to the customer and that is what uh, the marketing team may be interested in. See, the marketing is not marketing team is not using the system at all, but they are impacted indirectly by this product that uh, is a mobile app by increasing his revenue. So he is also an important stakeholder. And then we have accounts team. Accounts team, why would an account team be identified as a stakeholder? Simply put, if there are payments that needs to be made on the repairs, the service technician may collect a check or cash, and that has to be remitted to the accounts team. In addition to that, you may have a legal team. Legal team may be keen in, uh, let's say, giving the warranties, giving what, uh, what assurances or what uh, letters you give to the customer after the service is done. So, so it is important that you identify them as well. The sales team, spare parts team. There's one more team here, which is a spare parts team. Why would they be required as a stakeholder? Here is the point. Spare part will never directly interface the customer, but when the service technician goes there to the site and identifies few components which has to be purchased or which has to be taken or issued from the spare parts division, he will have to notify that person. So which means some kind of an app, some feature has to be there with the service technician where on a request he may place a request to the spare part team for issuance of few components. And see, in when the project when the project started, we never identified perhaps or we had difficulty in identifying the spare part team, account team, marketing team, and the legal team themselves. These team are generally missed. All right. Then we have uh, the senior executives. They are also part of your organization, which is the water purifier company. It could be managing director. It could be uh, vice president, so on and so forth. Generally, they are all directly uh, not impacted. But then, either they are responsible for a cost or uh, perhaps uh, for their product line that they are working. All right. So we have pretty much identified now the core layer, which is the system layer, the direct user. And then we went ahead with the next layer, which is the containing system, also looked upon as an organization. 
So layer one system layer and containing organization is all within your organization wherein you have control. Your processes can be used to control. The next onion ring will be the wider environment. Okay. Now the slide that you see here is that of a wider environment. It could be looked upon as an external entity from uh, when compared to your organization. So the last one typically are the people or group or organizations where you don't have control, which means your processes cannot control them. And they typically are your customers. They could be your suppliers. The spare parts have been, have been supplied by the suppliers. And then you have Bureau of Standards. In this case of uh, water purifier, Bureau of Standards. You need to comply, you need to put parts which comply to the Bureau of Standards perhaps. And there is environment agencies which will testify and or maybe uh, there is a rule or there is a standard that you need to comply as per environment agency. Or maybe there is some kind of a format or uh, a form that needs to be filled up after every installation or repair is done. And then you have testing agency. The water, the drinking water may have to be tested perhaps. So you may have to give the sample to them. And notice in the wider environment I have also mentioned codes. Codes is a, a way to resolve dispute. In case somebody let's say uh, files suit against you or case against your organization. So they become a stakeholder themselves. So you need to be aware of the stakeholder. What do we do with them is the next step. That is the next step. First identify who are all my stakeholders. And then end users who drink water. I have not purchased, my guests who come to my house have not purchased the water purifier. But when I serve water to the person, they are end users. They are also stakeholder, which means the quality of water is equally important perhaps. And you have other stakeholders such as channel partners. They could be distributors or other government agencies such as service tax department. Example, the service technician goes, repairs and generates a bill. And the bill says uh, 100, 100 rupees plus let's say a service tax on that. So the service tax has to be remitted to the service tax department. Unless you know there is a service tax department, identify them, you would not know what kind of format they would like to be having. And for that you may have to talk to your people inside, for it, such as an accounts team. Find out from them, are there any reports that you require which comply with government agencies, such as service tax. Did you see we started off with just requirement of three features and all of a sudden we have so many groups or individual or people who have been identified as stakeholder of my project. Some of them will be directly part of this, will be using the system, some will not use the system but they are integral part which is my own organization and some are completely external to my organization. They can bring in requirements, they can also influence the project success. I have not mentioned here uh, competitors. Competitors could also be your uh, stakeholders. You may want to uh, see feature functionality of the competitors. So identify them as your stakeholders and do the next step. All right. So that completes the three layer of identification of stakeholders. The first I would like to uh, summarize. The first layer contains contains the system layer which is the core team. It could be the project team and the user themselves. Next is your containing organization which is uh, your own organization. They don't directly use your system but they are impacted indirectly. And then finally the wider environment. All right. As I said it could be group of people, it could be an organization or it could be name of a person. You may want to do this as much as possible because this is the early stage of the project. Only after this the requirement gathering happens. Alright, let's uh, move on to our next section which is identify possible interactions. 